Hey guys, welcome back to Evelyn and Peter. I'm so excited to show you guys the design I have for you today. It is this jute cord cotton tray that I made. It is specifically made for Friendsgiving and just to display on your table um, and put little cute knickknacks on it or just place really anything, whatever that you want on the center of your table. Um, and it's actually made by crocheting cotton yarn around the jute cord and then the jute cord for the handles. And I'll show you guys how to make that as well. Um, it's really simple to make. We're, act we're just going to be working in increases. If you've made a hat before from the top down, it's gonna be just like that. We're gonna increase with each round and then make the little edge of our tray. And I'll show you guys how to do all of that in the video. I used Park Lane Jute Core, which is a four ply for this specific project, and then a Reup cotton yarn from Line Brand, which is just worsted weight um, cotton yarn. You can use really any cotton yarn, but I got both of these things at Joann's stores, as well as all of the things that I have displayed on it, which I'll show you guys pictures of. I also got from Joann's stores. Um, so if you're following along with this video, I recommend also following along with the written pattern, which you can find free on my blog and I'll link to that below. And then you can also find, um, the PDF for it in my shops if you prefer the printed version. So yeah, I hope you guys like this pattern. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Um, and thank you so much for subscribing and following along. So I hope you guys like it. So to get started, you're going to need some worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm using Lion Brand's Reup, and you're also going to need some jute cord. I'm using this four ply jute cord by Park Lane from Joann Stores, and you also need a five millimeter hook. So to begin, create a magic loop, insert your hook and pull up a loop, and then chain one, and then we're going to work 10 single crochet into the center of the magic loop. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then just pull that tail of yarn tight to secure it and bring all the stitches together you can see we have 10 single crochet total. So now we've completed round one and we're going to be bringing in our jute cord and start crocheting around the actual jute cord. So just have it hanging about a couple inches past your last stitch that you just made from round one. And we're going to be working our first single crochet into that very next stitch below. So insert your hook into the first single crochet and then you're also going to put that jute cord, lay it right over your hook, and then you're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over, pull through two for one single crochet made around the jute cord. And then you're gonna repeat that same thing, insert your hook into the very same stitch, work a single crochet, so we just increased, and then we're gonna do two single crochet into that next stitch, and two single crochet into the third stitch. So you're just going to do this all the way around, increasing in every stitch and working over that jute cord as you go around. And there's no need to tug at the jute cord, just be sure that you're bringing it around with you and crocheting over it for every single stitch from here on out all the way around. So again, two single crochet in each stitch for this round. 
and at the end of the round you should have a total of 20 single crochet So once you complete round two with two single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 20 single crochet, you can just take your stitch marker and place it on the loop that's on your hook. This will help us keep track of what round we're on and you will be moving it up with you with each round that you do. I also recommend double checking your stitch count and make sure you have 20 single crochet stitches before moving on to round three. So to begin round three, you're going to insert your hook into the very first stitch and still working over the cord, work one single crochet So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. That's one single crochet made. And then the very following stitch, you're going to increase by working two single crochet. So work two in the same. And then in the third stitch, just work one single crochet. And in the fourth stitch, work two single crochet for an increase. And just repeat this all the way around, working one single crochet, and then two single crochet, one single crochet, and two single crochet, and just repeat this around until you reach your stitch marker. And of course, we have our regular little visitor who you will see frequently in my videos. Boop! And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 30 single crochet once you reach the stitch marker. And now we are beginning row four. So just go ahead and move up your stitch marker. And we're going to continue increasing with this round. So in the first single crochet below, just work one single crochet. And in the second stitch below, work one single crochet. And then in the third stitch, make an increase. So work two single crochet into that same one. And just repeat this all the way around. So one single crochet, one single crochet, and an increase, which is two single crochet. And just continue the same thing all the way around until you reach the stitch marker. So now you should have a total of 40 single crochet and we can begin round five. So move up your stitch marker and we're going to be doing the same thing. So for this round, insert your hook into the first stitch, work one single crochet, one single crochet into the second stitch, and one single crochet into the third stitch. And then in that fourth stitch, you're going to make an increase. So two single crochet. And then repeat that again, one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet, and then an increase, which is two single crochet into the same stitch. And you can just repeat this all the way around. You should have ended that round with 50 single crochet and now we are beginning round six. So again, you can move up your stitch marker. And for this round, you will be working four single crochet and then working an increase in the fifth stitch. 
So one single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the second, one into the third, one into the fourth, and then in that fifth stitch work an increase, so two single crochet into the same stitch. So just repeat this all the way around, four single crochet and then an increase in the fifth, and at the end of the round you should have a total of 60 single crochet. So you're going to continue working the bottom of the tray doing the same exact process for a total of 16 rounds. So in the next round work five single crochet and then an increase and in the following round work six single crochet and an increase and in the following round work seven single crochet and an increase. Continue this same thing until you have a total of 16 rounds and your stitch count will be 160 single crochet. Okay, so now I've completed 16 rounds and I've been increasing with each round and I have a total of 160 single crochet around my circle and this begins round 17. So move up your stitch marker and for this round you'll just be working one single crochet into each stitch around. So you will no longer be increasing. Just work one single crochet into each stitch until you reach the stitch marker and your stitch count will stay the same at 160 single crochet. So you should have just completed round 17 which was just working one single crochet in each stitch around and now we will begin round 18 and for this round we'll be working it a little bit differently. So go ahead and move up your stitch marker And for this round, we will not be working through both the front loop and back loop of the stitch below. We will only be working through the front loop, which is the closest loop to you. So you can see when I insert my hook, I stick it only through that front loop on the single crochet. And then you'll still work your, your single crochet as normal around the cord, but you will only be working it in that loop that's closest to you. So instead of putting your hook under both the front and back loop, which is the little V shape that you normally do for a regular single crochet, you'll just put your hook in that front loop only and just do this all the way around. There's no increasing for this round. So just insert your hook into that loop closest to you, work one single crochet, and repeat that all the way around. Okay, and we just completed round 18 and the edges of our tray are starting to curl up, which is exactly what we want it to do. And you will also notice that there is a line or a little ledge left of the back loop that we did not work into. Make sure you take note of that because you will be working into that at a later point. But to begin the next round, just move up your stitch marker. And for this one, we will again be working in both loops. So you will no longer be working in just the front loop only. You will be working in both the front and back loop, working a normal single crochet. And there's no increasing or decreasing. So just work one single crochet into each stitch around, working through both the front and the back loop. After you finish this round, repeat the same thing two more rounds for a total of 21 rounds. Okay, now you should have a total of 21 rounds made and we will begin round 22, but before we do, you need to fold over the rim of your tray. So just fold it down, make sure it's even on all sides. So this round's going to be a little bit different. We're actually going to be joining or seaming our current round with that little line or ledge that I talked about earlier, which is the back loop line that is left over from round 18 where we worked only in the front loop. And we're going to be inserting our hook through our current stitch and also through that back loop and then slip stitching to join. So insert your hook into your very first stitch of your current row 
and then just tuck the rope out of the way. You're no longer going to be working your single crochet around the rope. You're just going to tuck it underneath your hook and that's going to be our little ledge that is within the tray. Just help keeping it firm and then insert your hook into the very first little line of the back loop of the rows below and then yarn over, pull your yarn through that back loop and through the stitch and through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. Again, insert your hook into the second stitch and then insert it into the second little back loop and then slip stitch through. So insert your third stitch and into the third stitch of the back loop, yarn over and pull through that back loop, pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. And basically we're just slip stitching to join all the way around. Make sure you're inserting your hook into the correct stitch and the correct back loop. So the fourth with the fourth, the fifth from the fifth. Just make sure you're not accidentally skipping any on either side. And just once you get a few going, it gets a lot easier. You can see it's a lot easier to hold and it goes pretty quickly. So you're just slip stitching around. Make sure that rope is tucked in and you no longer will be working your single crochet around that rope, just slip stitching those rows together. Okay, now I'm coming up on the last few stitches of this round and you can see that it's a little bit difficult to see those back loops from round 18 where, where you should be inserting your hook, but you might just need to wiggle some things out of the way. It's kind of hidden up underneath there since the work is made in spirals and continuous rounds. So to help us get a better view, you can just cut your cord and then just tuck the cord in and we're just going to finish off the last few stitches. So like I'm doing, you might just need to move things and stretch a little bit to find those last few back loops, but just continue as you've been doing and work slip stitches until you come to the very last stitch. Okay, and we've just completed our very last slip stitch. So the base of our tray is complete. Your rope should be nicely tucked away under that rim of the tray. Now all you need to do is cut your yarn. So you can go ahead and cut the cotton yarn and then just pull that tail of yarn through the loop. And then you can weave in the ends of the cotton yarn with a yarn needle but the base of our tray is finished and now we will just add some rope handles. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how to make this little rope handle. So I've already made my first one and you're going to need a nine millimeter hook for this and then just your jute cord and I'll show you how to make it. So it's not too important where you decide to attach your handles, you can decide wherever you want. So just create a slip knot with only the jute cord, insert your hook and pull tight. And I've already made my first handle, so I'm gonna line up my second handle with it. I'm not counting stitches or measuring or anything like that. I'm just eyeballing it because it doesn't have to be perfect. And I found it easiest to insert my hook right underneath round 18. So right underneath where we actually crocheted the rope into the rim of the tray. So right underneath that little ledge, just pick any stitch and insert your hook and then yarn over your hook and just pull the jute cord through the tray and then through the loop on your hook. So basically you're just slip stitching to join. And once you've joined your cord, 
you're just going to be making a series of chains to create the handle and you can make it as long or as short as you want to you can just play with it and see how many you want to make so just yarn over and pull through I believe I made about 10 chains for mine so chain the length that you want So once you've chained as many as you wanted, you're just going to join it the same exact way as you did before. So I'm just lining up my handles and eyeballing it. And then just like when you attached it, insert your hook underneath round 18 and then just yarn over, pull it through and then pull it through the loop on your hook. So again, you're just slip stitching to join the other side and then you can cut your cord, pull it all the way through, and then just secure both ends by pulling it tight to make sure that they won't come loose. You can see I left about an inch on both ends of my first handle, so I'll do the same for the second handle. And that's all there is to it. That is the jute cord tray. I hope you guys liked this pattern. It was really fun to make and it's super easy to customize. You can make them as big or as small as you want to or design different handles. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and be sure to leave a comment below on what you wanna see next. And thank you so much for subscribing.